Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. We're in Chapter 5, part of this playlist, Limiting Distributions. And we left off on the Central Limit Theorem. So that's where we're going to start today. So the Central Limit Theorem, if x1 through xn is a random sample from a distribution with mean and variance, the uh, finite variance, then the the limiting distribution of Zn, or this ratio, this fraction, and then you could also divide or multiply the numerator by 1 over n, the denominator 1 over n, and it reduces to this. Either of these limits to a standard normal. So Zn limits in distribution to Z, a standard normal as n goes to infinity. Let's prove this. We're actually going to prove a simpler version of this. We'll use what the uh, moment generating function will assume it exists now which it doesn't always exist so that's a stronger assumption in this now usually the proof is uses complex number version of the moment generate function called a characteristic function which always exists but in this playlist we haven't covered that and so we're just going to assume the moment generating function exists so let mt denote the moment generating function of this random variable x minus mu and then we're going to denote it by little m of t so that's the moment generated function of x minus mu and note that m of 0 is 1 as always the first derivative of the moment generated function evaluated at 0 is the first moment remember our random variable is x minus mu so it's expected value of that which is zero, right? Take the expected value, expect value in, that's mu minus mu zero. The second derivative of the moment during function evaluated at zero is the expected value of the second moment. So it's x minus mu squared, which that by definition is, is the variance, sigma squared. Now expanding the moment during function by the Taylor series formula about zero, or McLaurin series, gives this so m of t, which is the moment generating function of x minus mu, it's m of m evaluated at 0. The first derivative evaluated at 0 times t, of course, divided by 1 factorial. Second derivative times t squared over 2 factorial, which is just 2. Now, this is an exact equation. Now, this c is between 0 and t because we're that's where we're evaluating it but m the first derivative evaluated at zero is zero so that goes away and we're left with this now what we do is we add a well-chosen zero so we add this quantity and then subtract that quantity next let's look at the moment generating function of zn now remember zn is this quantity here So it's the moment generating function of the sum evaluated at t divided by square root of n sigma. That's just a property of the moment generating functions. I have a, a, a few videos in this playlist on moment generating functions. And so since the xi's are independent, this the sum becomes the product. So nothing else has changed, but since these are all, these are independent, and this moment generating function is actually, it's the same for each xi, then it's just the product of that quantity for one of them raised to the nth power. But this m of xi minus mu, notationally we're calling that little m. So we're going to switch it to little m. And that's the way that we defined it up in here raised to the nth, but little m evaluated at t over sigma n, or sigma n times sigma, is you just plug this quantity in for t right here. And that's what we get here. Now I want to put it in this form where it's something over n plus something over n. And of course it's all quantity squared, so nothing has changed there. And this is still exact, and because that Cassi is it's some value we don't know what it is but it's some value between zero and, and t 
over square root of n sigma. Okay. So now let's remember this is we're trying to find the limiting distribution. So n goes to infinity. So note that when n goes to infinity, this quantity goes to zero, which means C goes to zero. And the second derivative evaluated at C when that when C goes to zero, it might you know is that sigma and then minus sigma is zero. So notice what this is right here. Okay, so we can rewrite this equation as as this. So the one comes down t squared over n, and we just call this dn because this is a function of n that goes to zero as n goes to infinity. And then in the formula in the first video, we showed that this limits to e raised to this uh, number here, which is what this is. But that is a moment generated function for a standard normal distribution. And so in the second video, we showed that if the moment generating function limits to a known moment generating function, that says that random variable converges in distribution. That was video two. So since the moment generating functions limit to a known moment generating function, the standard normal, that says that the limit of the CDFs of, Z, of Zn limit to the standard normal CDF. You know, and you write that as Zn converges in distribution to Z, which is a standard normal. And that's the end of the proof. So let's do some examples. So here let's let WI be the weight of the ith airline passenger's luggage. Assume that the weights are independent, each with PDF and CDF defined here. Notice the weights are between zero and some value B. And for the first problem, let's assume N is 100, theta is three and B is 80. And let's approximate the weight of the first 100 pieces of luggage. Well, let's let's calculate the probability that the sum of the luggage weights is more than 6,025. We're going to do this in two approaches. Remember that in the central limit, there were two forms that we could have used. First approach, let's find the mean of W, which just take the mean of, of this, so plug in the density. Notice this was 3 minus 1 is 2, but we have to add another w. So that's 60. Expected value of w squared is 3840. That means the variance is 240. So let's look at this probability. Let's divide both sides by n times mu, and then divide it by the square root of n sigma, which is this. And that is equal to this by the central limit theorem, limits to a, a z, a standard normal density, and this is 0.16. And you look that up in a table or use r to calculate it as 0.43. Now the second approach is, this is the probability that we're trying to find. If we divide both sides by 100, then this is the mean of the weights. That's w, and this is 60.25. Then the second form of that central limit theorem says just subtract the mean, the mu, from both sides, divide by sigma over the square root of n. This limits to a z, standard normal. This again is 0.16, the same, and it's the same probability. Now let's find the limiting distribution of r n, but and that's going to be the largest order statistic divided by b raised to the nth power. Right, if we take a sample of n pieces of luggage, there's going to be a largest a piece of luggage that's heaviest, and that's that deals with the largest order statistic. So, there's going to be two approaches. Let's find the CDF of R, right? So, that's this. So, it's the probability that this value is less than R. Uh, take the nth root of both sides, multiply by b, we get this. If the largest piece of luggage is less than that, that means every other piece of luggage has to be less than that. So it's a probability that each one of the pieces of luggage is less than that value. And since they're independent, it's the product. E 
each of these are they're independent and they have the same density so we could really just plug in x1 you know they're all the same so it doesn't matter but then that gets rid of the index so then it's uh, well i guess we plug in the cdf of x1 which we know so we plug this value into the the that's what this is there's n of them so you raise it to the nth power the the b's cancel right that theta comes in that's a minus theta that cancel this is theta over n raised to the n it's just r over theta so then this is the limiting uh, the limiting distribution of the cds which is this it's zero if we're less than zero it's r to the theta if we're between zero and one and one otherwise the second approach is we find the cdf of the nth order statistic so i have a, a couple videos prior to this on order statistics and we find the cd the pdf of the largest order statistic which there's a this is the formula and if you watch those videos you instantly know that this is correct we were given the pdfs and the cds so we just plug it in the uh, cdf of yn would be the the integral from zero to y you know it's the probability of being less than y so we we integrate the density that we just found from zero to y we do the math and this is the cdf so now let's look at the cdf of rn well that's the probability that, that random variable is less than r take the nth root of both sides multiply by r we get this but this is the cdf of the rth order statistic that we just calculated so we plug this in for y and we get this things cancel and we get r to the theta which is the same value that we got in the, the previous approach okay so we're going to do this example um, in the next video so i hope you enjoyed this i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye